Hi, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, no, I've I've uh, found the uh, the presentations, those discussions, fascinating actually. And uh, right. I, I would say that because um, hopefully in the next few slides I'll be able to explain a little bit more about uh, what a growth hub is and what its purpose in life is. I do recognise uh, some individuals on the calls today. So hi, Kate. Hi, Ash. Uh, I'm sure there's others that I've met as well at some stage. Uh, so I'll try my best to to, to whiz through this, really. But um, I think uh, one of the things to to recognise is is that a lot of the things that I've just been listening uh, about really is is that for many individuals uh, that are looking to either start their business growth journey or they're looking to expand their business in some way, shape or form, is that it's a little bit of a well. It can be quite complex to navigate the support infrastructures and who's out there and who can do what. It, it can be quite confusing. And one of the reasons why growth hubs were, were set up was to address that in that uh, we are a uh, central point, um, a gateway, shall we say, for business support. Uh, I say business support uh, and I very much include social enterprises, CICs, sole traders, self-employed within that, uh, because um, you, you, everybody has to start somewhere and we recognise that. And uh, what we try to do is, uh, this slide is uh, uh, is illustrating there, is um, is be that, that, that central point. But um, a, a friendly bunch of uh, individuals, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a short while, that will meet with you typically and that and that can be online or it can be in person telephone calls where we uh, do our very best to understand uh, what you're looking to achieve within your business or as part of your business idea and then to be able to work with you then to produce what we affectionately call an action plan and that action plan can set out some uh, some options for you to consider um but again, listening to what I've just been uh, listening to over the last uh, hour or so is that uh, it, what we really do need to do, and I appreciate that some of the team were with Kate to Aston yesterday doing exactly that, was listening to what this support is about so that we're better informed uh, when we can speak to individuals that are looking for, for support. Um, do you just want to pop onto the next slide, please? Um, and I guess this slide uh, is a fraction uh, of the ecosystem, the business support ecosystem that's out there. It, you know, if if we had capacity and we had time to do it, there'd probably be about another 10 slides uh, very similar to this one where we look at how we can best support that business. We will provide a, a diagnostic, a business review, but then very much part of that is understanding how we can best support that business and quite often that's about active referrals or signposting to some of these support organizations what we have developed over um over the years really is is that we recognize that for certain sizes of business or sectors or stage of business growth that it can be quite advantageous to to have a a diagnostic that lends itself to that particular uh, subject area, shall we say. So we we would always offer out a generic uh, review, a business idea uh, session, just to look at that. But what we then need to do really is, is ask some questions that will help uh, ultimately um, ourselves and the individual concerned, uh, which, is the, which are the right kind of systems for them. So it's imperative that we keep up to date ourselves on, on what's actually out there and what can support uh, businesses going forward. So um, as I mentioned yesterday, we met with Aston and that is because we, we're not affiliated to anybody. We are, we are, our purpose is to work with you and to identify what is the, the, the best way really that we can support you going forward. Um, uh, somebody mentioned a little bit earlier about um the GBS LEP, uh, the local enterprise partnership, and the and the demise of that. Well, you, you know, I think we were very much part of that, 
And uh, ultimately, these things do come round in cycles, don't they? I mean, I'm old enough to remember the days of Business Link, which, which you know, was a, a predecessor to some of the support programs that we're seeing out there today. Um, we joined as a growth hub, lock, stock and barrel. All of the team moved over to Birmingham City Council um, in December, 1st of December. Some may argue that um, there couldn't have been a worse time to join Birmingham City Council, but... But nonetheless, we have, and uh, we are a formed entity, and we were able to hit the ground running. So that's been a really good, positive thing. But then tapping into the support of our wider colleagues now at Birmingham City Council so that we can offer um, a, a more inclusive uh, support programme, shall we say. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we you may want to think of us as almost like a call centre to a degree that you know we will receive inquiries that come in from email, from telephone calls, from our web forms, from social media, word of mouth. And as a result of that, we will then um, triage that uh, inquiry, shall we say, and pass that through to either our business advisors or, or account managers, again, dependent upon size, sector of that business. And it is about um, listening, looking at what the business is trying to do again, and then uh, providing a pathway, a gateway into that support. Next slide, please. Um, what we also try to do is we recognise that one-to-one -one is, uh, or it can be, in a really effective way of supporting that individual. But quite often, there are uh, certain subject areas that lend themselves quite well to workshops and seminars and webinars. So the one-to-many side of things. Um, there's no one-size-fits-all. We do appreciate that. But some of the, um, the basics, shall we say, or some of the standard operating procedures within some of those technologies that we're looking at there or uh, business um, uh, responsibilities, shall we say, that we can cover off through uh, workshops and seminars. And again, they can be influenced by the size and sector. So it may be that we do uh, a session around finance and funding, but that could be for social enterprises or that could be for manufacturing companies. We, we try to match up uh, as closely as we can, you know, the, the most effective way, again, of working with that with that business. And next slide, please. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've we, Kate mentioned, uh, uh, you know, our previous relationships and uh, we were funded through a combination of European funding, ERDF funding, ESF funding and, uh, and central government funding, which, which is a great way of, uh, of preserving our impartiality, our independence. Um, but now we're, we're delivering our support through something called Business Growth West Midlands, which is the, which is the combined authorities uh, business support platform, really. Seven local authorities are all very much involved in this. So we cover Birmingham and Solihull specifically, but we are... Uh, incredibly uh, linked, shall we say, with the Dudleys of this world and the Coventries and the, the seven local authorities that make up the West Midlands. So any, anything that does come into us and perhaps it would be better suited for uh, one of the local authorities, then we can always do that signposting through to them. So our team is, um, sometimes somebody mentioned the other day, it looks like a scene from Cocoon. Uh, there's, a, I, I don't know what the combined age would be of the, of the team. We have got some youngsters in there, but many of us have been around for quite some time, shall we say. And um, so I like to think there's a lot of knowledge and experience in there, uh, but also a lot of passion and vitality as well. We want to try and do the very best that we can. Mm -hmm. All of my team have either owned their own businesses or have held senior positions in businesses. So we do get it. You know, we, we've been there. Uh, most of us have got the T-shirt and the blood pressure as a result of it. But we, we you know, we, uh, uh, as, I, as I said, we're, we're there really to provide that uh, that empathy uh, and, to, and to provide the, the best support we can. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, we have been around for quite some time. Um, we've got a really good track record. Um, these are just some stats really that hopefully provide you with some, some comfort, some reassurance that uh, you know, this is bread and butter for us. This is this is what we do. The support is so varied. Um, and perhaps if we go on to the next slide, um, it can cover all sorts of different things. Uh, I wouldn't say that these are um, the most uh, 
widely accessed areas, but um, uh, intellectual property, as I'm sure colleagues on the on the call will agree, is, is a massive area for consideration by any business that's going forward. And getting it wrong can be uh, can be quite tricky to recover from. Shall we say? It can cost you in the long run. Uh, we're in. We're linked with as many of the growth programs, sorry, the grant programs that are out there. Um, and Ash, uh, who's here from Birmingham City Council today, will uh, most likely be talking about some of the grants that we are involved in. SME grants, so almost like business development grants, but there are grants, specific grants around sustainability, net zero, low carbon, um, and again, a, a plethora of other grants that's out there so we, as part of our services we always try to look at what's out there from a financial perspective um, so we do have within the team individuals that have specialisms so that could be access to finance it could be intellectual prop property um, professional services food and drink uh, that's how we try to do that so everybody has everybody's a business advisor first and foremost but they may have uh a distinct focus on certain areas really so a bit of a whistle stop tool but hopefully that's provided some clarity on what we are and what we can hopefully help you with perfect thank you very much john that's helpful any questions for john no i've got one question john i'm not sure if it's um if you'll have the response to that in the shared prosperity funding there was about mm. Some funds um, they were allocated for business support. So the work you are doing does that include that funding element, or is that still sitting somewhere looking to be allocated? Or would you have? Uh, well, I, I, th I think it's fair to say that um, uh, the combined authority. Uh, it appears that they keep finding a little bit of money down the back of the sofa, and uh, and they want to use that. So things like. Commonwealth Games, legacy funding is as this some opportunities we know for social enterprises, um, and the combined authority put funding into uh, SME advice, so business advice and support. So they're effectively paying for uh, the salaries of the advisor teams, but they also put money into grants as well. You know, so uh, the grants, some of the grants I've just mentioned there they are coming directly from UK Shared Prosperity Funding. And that's, again, meant to uh, try to uh, replace some of the funding that used to come from the European side of things. Uh, in reality, you know, we know that it's never going to be anything like the amount of funding, the values of the funding that we used to get, but it's a really good starting point. And we're just about to enter year three of UK's, UK Shared Prosperity Funding. So, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that we, all of us, deliver the best service that we can. So hopefully, um, this time next year, when we're looking at the possibilities of single settlements, that we're in a really good position to then influence things like five-year funding deals, those kinds of things, really. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question, um, Iram, if that's okay? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is directly to you, John. Um, so for others who are outside of... Um, social enterprise and it was myself that um mentioned gb slip because obviously i was taking people mm. onto that master class what is yeah. that i mean this might not be the right time to ask the question but where do i go would it be the services that you've just um uh, highlighted mm. are key to any business startup and the continuation sure. of that support that gb slip were providing so these are people who may have started business kind of you know the action plan changed um looking now for support and funding to go forward to the next level and these yeah. were some of the key things that were available uh, during that that yeah. duration while they were there so it's just really a bit frustration where do we now go or would you be the best person or who would be the best person um to give that advice going forward uh, I, I would always uh, and i would say this of course but i would say get in touch with us you know let's let's have okay. a discussion let's look at where you are now uh okay. your growth ambitions you know any barriers okay. to okay. that and, right. and you know we can work with you to look at that yeah thank you thanks okay thank can you ask... carol sorry yeah can you ask a question um with the support you offer because she's right there's a lot of like um sole traders and people who would benefit from mm -hmm. 
But I'm not sure that at a grassroots level, people are aware of what there is. That, that I'm not sure across the localities that people know what, yeah, what support, yeah, what support there is. Um, and I, 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 I was, I, I went, yeah, I was, I'm saying that because I went to um, an event yesterday and there was a group of women and they were just all sewing and stitching and they, they could actually, we're talking about creating this kind of enterprise and I'm just thinking, where do they go with that? You know, they'll have to figure it all out themselves, but how how is it reaching out, yeah, to that grassroots, yeah? Yeah, yeah and I think communities are very much part of this this drive now that, you know, if we if we sit there and expect people to come and knock on our door, then, you know, that's the wrong approach. You know, we have to get out there and we have to promote into the communities about the support that's available. And I know that there's some, again, the combined authority, and Kathy's on the call today, is that you know there's been a recent call for uh, for support into community-led organisations as well to get those messages out. You know it's um, it is a frustration. We we feel incredibly frustrated that quite often somebody will say to us, "I wish we'd known about you two years ago, three years ago, wherever that is." You know, and uh, um, we we do our best to try and make um, people individuals aware that we're out there. And I know the combined authority is um, is trying to do that as well, but there's nothing better, as we all know, than that kind of word of mouth. And if that word of mouth is in a community environment, that that has to be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I and I think that's where community organisations like us they can play a key role in this as well. So this is one of the workshops, but the future aspirations are that we hold these sessions on regular basis. So as one of the things from uh, as next steps, uh, which I I've got, I was going to share later anyway, but there's no harm in sharing that information now. Is that we'll bring this group together and it'll be a face to face delivery, so we can really kind of like get to meet each other and also ask these questions and get the information more. Um, you know uh, uh, more kind of like aware uh, so that people are more aware in our local communities and also know who who is providing that support and how do we get in touch with them and i agree with you carol i think there there are a few colleagues here who recently um secured the share prosperity funding small grants from us and we invited them to attend this this event hopefully they'll they'll be finding it um you know, uh, interesting and informative, but there are more people we are connected with as community anchor organisations, as kind of like you know existing kind of structures in the in the community. So Kathy, ISC, they've been working in this kind of space for a very long time. We are in you know similar kind of position. Carol, you've been working in that space, and Andrew, who was here earlier, he still is on the call. Again, you know, how do we engage with our communities from a social enterprise perspective and hold these sessions on a regular basis so that it becomes a business as usual for them as well? That you know, this is the place I can go to, and this is what I need to ask. And then, if they can't help, at least they'll know someone else in the you know in the local area who who is able to provide that that kind of support. Um. So the aim and uh, you know our vision is that we have more of those kind of like. You know, sessions available for our, our communities. Cathy, is there something you wanted to mention or? There is indeed, Iram, yes. Um, I think one of the ways in which we can be most useful in that sense is actually by starting to bring back real experience um, from people who've gone through this process. So people who've worked with John's team, um, people who've gone through the absolutely brilliant things that we're going to see from Aston and from, um, you know, say growth and accelerator and everything else. But I think it really helps people to, to have those concrete examples from the people concerned, which is, this is what we did. You know, because sometimes, um, as Carol was saying, it's uh, people don't have a frame of reference to understand what they can do with this support. So it doesn't mean anything until we start to tell them those stories of, you know, this person went and had, you know, these sessions with John and then they were pointed at IP and they were pointed at this and they were pointed to that. And now six months later, look at where they are and look at where their turnover is. It, it's that type of story that we've got to get back into the community so people can go, oh, I could do that. Yeah, perfect. That is exactly, yeah. One more question directed to you, John. Um, are do we come to you, or are you you and your team available to come to us? When I say us, as in you talk about web networking and seminars and workshops, mm -hmm. is that is Either. that okay? Yeah, yeah. We have um, 
uh, many of the team members will uh, will attend sessions like this so that they can give an overview themselves about what the support that's around there. Um, but we do uh, we do have uh, the ability to deliver sessions ourselves if we wanted to around a subject area. So again, okay. things like um, we have a female entrepreneurs program, we have um, an access to finance program, but mm -hmm. we, we're very much about pointing businesses in the direction of the likes of Aston or BCU or wherever that actually yes. is, Steam House, yes. you know, that's that's very much part of our role as well. And to give people the options as well, you know, because, it, again, we recognise that somebody may, may just say to us, well, uh, yeah, it's two days, it sounds brilliant, but I just can't take that out of the business. I can't afford that time or whatever that is. Yes. Okay, well, yes. what about this particular way of, of looking at it? You know, so it's a little bit about trying to make it as bespoke as we can. The reason why I'm asking is because I'm not sure if you are aware of Newton Lodge's locations, but we do have a community hall and that's where we hold a lot of our meetings and events. And I actually mm -hmm. organise jobs fairs uh, for the local community. And in that respect, there are a lot of self-employed or business starter or people engaging more frequently now with us. And mm -hmm. I would like to use that space and obviously have someone like yourself or a team member to be present to do a delivery in that respect, yeah. in specific areas, could be intellectual property, whatever. But we would have that discussion and then I would then arrange mm. those meetings. So it would sure. be using time effectively to deliver to yeah. people who are interested. Yeah, okay, that's fine. The, Thank you. the other thing I would mention as well is that, you know, the Business Growth West Midlands, the combined authority, have got a significant budget for event delivery. <laughs> and quite often they're saying to us, can you come up with any, you know, uh, any subject areas? What are the businesses, what are the communities telling you about what they would benefit from? You mm -hmm. know, so that there are, it doesn't have to be that, you know, we have yeah. online sessions. If, if, if we feel as though there's sufficient interest and that there's, um, mm -hmm. you know, an opportunity to get in front of communities again as a businesses, then, you know, we can yeah. explore that with the combined authority directly. Yeah. We've got Sarah. Sarah, sorry. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, thanks ever such a lot for today. And I've got a lot of insight from the different presentations. So thanks very much. Um, just from a nurse and therapist, I know some of the people on this uh, meet. So nice to see everyone. Those people I've seen before. Um, but just from, from listening to what everyone was saying, sometimes it's been very hard for me as a nurse and therapist. I've not always had those business skills that I think um, somebody mentioned in that. And so it's very hard to navigate through that system and I think Marcy has uh, mentioned that as well and, and Daniel and, and John and, and stuff in your presentations but I think for myself I've gone from sort of the growth hubs to Aston University and um, to Founders Collective and various kind of courses with uh, with accelerator hubs and things like that and sometimes they've not been appropriate for the time that I was in they're probably appropriate now but there wasn't appropriate at the time that I was navigating at that point but I was signposted to those various things thinking oh that'll be helpful and so I think sometimes they weren't they were helpful now and they will be helpful now but I think it was quite difficult at the time to to navigate maybe what the right support at the right time what actually was if that makes any sense for my journey and ultimately I just want to help more young people and more families to be able to help and prevent poor mental health and and to be be able to network and collaborate with my local community and um, to be able to have people that are having less than two years waiting lists, et cetera. So coming to a group that I run for mental health, which is proven to be an effective means um, is, is enriching more people and then having one to ones with those after that, that program. So then it's it's more of um, a streamlined approach. Um, but I'm just kind of really wondering if we can all from this meeting today have a group meeting as a community because when I got my funding from ENNS which was amazing and it's really developed but that was from absolute sheer graft of networking on my part of so I'm just thinking if we can have a monthly kind of growth meeting where we can all share almost a directory and navigate this process a little bit easier so that's just a, a point for, for me.